This video is brought to you by Babbel. As someone who's been getting more into international pieces of lost media, like Hirogata or Roy de Espacio, the language barrier is always a challenge. And while I can understand and read Spanish to a certain degree, speaking it admittedly isn't my strong suit. And that's where Babbel comes into play. Their app gets you speaking from the very beginning, in real-world practical conversations, instead of asking where the biblioteca is. They offer various courses for different languages, and their speech recognition technology helps to improve pronunciation and accent to make you a better, more natural-sounding speaker. And if that's not enough, there's a 20-day money-back guarantee, so you can try absolutely risk-free. On top of all of that, by using my special link, you can get 65% off your subscription. Again, click the link in the description below si quieres aprender un lengua nueva. Thanks to Babbel for sponsoring this video. In 2012, coming off of the success of iCarly, Nickelodeon had plans for two spin-offs. The first was Sam and Cat, which was greenlit by the studio and ran for over 30 episodes. The second, however, was called Gibby, and it sadly never aired. It starred Noah Monk, reprising his role as Gibby, getting into misadventures with four new characters. A pilot was shot and edited, yet was never picked up by the network, becoming a piece of Nickelodeon lost media. Next to Classified Alternate Ending. From 2004 to 2007, cult classic sitcom Nets to Classified School Survival Guide was first aired and it was hugely popular among Nickelodeon fans. Also known as Nets to Classified, it ran for 54 episodes across three seasons and is still one of the channel's most well-known shows. Main character Ned Bigby shares advice and tips on the perils and pitfalls of adolescence and how to survive middle school life. But here's where things get weird. Some fans believe that the final episode actually had an alternate ending, which seemingly cannot be found or even confirmed. Titled Guide to Field Trips, Permission Slips, Signs, and Weasels, it was the first and only hour-long episode of the show. And in the official ending, here's how things play out. After various plot points, including a weasel, a love triangle, some art thieves, and a bulldozer, the students arrive to their school to discover that it's been destroyed. But according to some sources, this episode of the show had a supposed alternate ending. Though fans can't seem to agree on what happened in this alternate ending, it involved an alien, or aliens, and some form of fight or battle between the kids and these aliens. Again, no one can quite agree on how it played out, but lots of people seem to remember it occurring. Even stranger, if you use the Wayback Machine to access the Nickelodeon website, there is a 2011 record of a page titled Ned's Declassified Alternate Ending. The presence of this page seems to imply that such an ending really did exist, but there's nothing on the page. It doesn't confirm what this alternate ending might have been, and there's no concrete evidence anywhere else online. What's really weird to me is that Aliens were never in Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide and never appeared in the show as far as I can remember. So why would it feature an alternate ending with aliens? It's just so bizarre and sounds false. I wouldn't even have known about it if a fan didn't email me about this alternate ending. I mean, does it exist? And if it does, what exactly happened? Brain Surge. Back in September 2009, Nickelodeon began airing episodes of a quiz-based game show called Brain Surge, which was inspired by a mysterious Japanese game show named Brain Survivor. Brain Surge was in some ways 
similar to Nickelodeon's mega-famous Funhouse, but a little more kooky and controversial. For the first two seasons of the quiz, each episode featured six contestants and three rounds. The questions and challenges included visual puzzles, slime-covered contestants, category quizzes, fart sounds, foam-filled slides, memory tests, concentration games, a segment featuring Jeff's big book of super fantastic true chronicles of true that are absolutely true, and lots more weird and wacky stuff. Loud, garish, brash, and silly, contestants were encouraged to be as crazy as possible, and episodes were outrageously over the top. During Season 3, the format was changed, and instead became known as Family Brain Surge. Each episode featured five teams of two people, and each team was made up of one young person, along with one of their older relatives. Though 120 episodes of Brain Surge were filmed, only about 90 have been recovered in their entirety. And many of these episodes have been found, then lost again, then found again, only to be lost again. Some were found on YouTube, many were found on Google Drive, and lots were discovered in various other places. Most interestingly, many fans believe in the existence of an unaired and never found pilot episode, as some footage from an early Brain Search promo was never seen in any of the aired episodes. Fans have tried to locate this pilot, along with the other missing episodes, but have had no success. Show host Jeff Sutphen has even claimed that he, nor the studio, have access to any other episodes of the show. When Brain Search producer Derek Bartholomus was asked if he had any other episodes in his possession, he replied that the problem with releasing them lay in, quote, conflicting rights issues, but expressed hope that the situation might change in the future. So who knows? One day, we might just get to see every last Brain Search episode every last strange segment, and every last slime cover contestant. Gordon Blair. Next up, a show that, although once lost, might now be fully recovered. This is a strange piece of claymation, and it was first featured on US television sometime in 2004 or 2005. This short-lived stop-motion series featured the strange mishaps of a disaster-attracting chef. But it wasn't just any old culinary mastermind. Instead, the chef was a wacky frog who spoke in a strange French accent. Je m'appelle Gordon Blair. <laughs> Excessive and over-the-top, the show was bold, brash, and bizarre. Plot points included sentient gingerbread men, a tongue-biting lobster, kitchen calamities, an evasive pigeon, lots of loud noise, and a whole load of disgusting-looking food. According to the vast majority of online information, it seems that only three episodes were ever made. And since three episodes have been discovered, it appears that this show is no longer lost, though it's still strangely labeled as partially found on the Lost Media Wiki. In total, these three episodes clock in at around five minutes. So although some people remember the show fondly, it's a pretty niche lost media memory. And it's definitely one of the oddest shows that Nickelodeon have ever produced. Wienerville. The Wacky Wienerville originally aired from July 1993 to February 1996. A bizarre variety show that took place on a giant puppet stage it was created by comedian and puppeteer Mark Wiener. Most characters were played by Wiener himself, including leather-wearing teenager Socko, gum-chewing rock musician Cocktail Frank, the long-suffering Mayor Wienerville, pun-cracking Captain Bob, and a belligerent parody of Barney the Dinosaur. Mark Wiener even played a version of himself as the official presenter of the show, and the guy responsible for trying to hold all the chaos together. Most of the puppets were presented in a unique way. To play the various characters, Wiener would place his own head into a hole above a miniature puppet body. This has since become a hugely popular way to present puppets, making the show massively influential. The entire show was set in the fictional city of Wienerville, and featured over 100 characters with various appearances and accents. While most well known for its cast of curious puppets, the show also included games, 
audience interactions, stand-up comedy, and even other cartoons. Interspersed during the show were screenings of Betty Boop, Mr. Magoo, Popeye, and others. More than 60 episodes of the show were made, including several seasonal specials. Over half of these episodes have been found, but around 20 remain lost. Because there have only been reruns of four different episodes since way back in 1997, it seems increasingly unlikely that the missing episodes will ever resurface. Since it's a pretty old show, and because very few reruns occurred, Wienerville isn't really well remembered. But at the time, it was hugely popular and received lots of viewers' attention and award nominations. But despite its popularity, it was canceled after only two seasons. It was allegedly canceled because, during the mid-90s, Nickelodeon wanted the channel to be a bit different, and Wienerville seemingly didn't fit the channel's new direction. According to one user at the Lost Media Wiki, Mark Wiener is in possession of all the episodes, even those which are lost. That user, although what they say may not be necessarily true, claims to have emailed Mark Wiener, and now Wiener replied, stating that these episodes, quote, are unable to be released because the rights to the show are owned by Nickelodeon. So although there's a small chance that the episodes might resurface one day, it looks to be a pretty unlikely prospect. By the way, this one takes us all the way back to 1979. By the Way was one of Nickelodeon's first ever five shows. The other four being Pinwheel, Video Comics, America Goes Bananas, and Nickelflix. Running for only one year and one season, it was first known by its in-development name, Pocket Money. A rudimentary combination of animation and live action, By the Way was led by a female character named Josie, who typically presented her skits with a backdrop of mountains or forests. These wraparound segments were peppered with various cartoons, one of which was allegedly named Froggy Went a Courtin. It seemed wholesome, heartfelt, and educational, and hugely different to what Nickelodeon became known for in the future. But aside from these details, little else is known about the show, and only around 10 minutes remain. When it was first released, a newspaper article described the show as follows. Quote, By the way, is a freewheeling, wide-ranging program for children ages 7 to 12, structured to make kids aware of the ever-changing issues to be dealt with, along with the path of life. By the way, explores children and the world around them. It looks at their problems and adventures, the real world and the fantasy world, what came before, and what is yet to come. Seems almost philosophical. <laughs> the character of Josie was played by Andrea Hellman, who later became much more well-known for writing children's books. Because very little is known about the show, we can't be sure how many episodes were produced, what happened to those episodes that were released, or why it was cancelled. This is a weird entry, so if you know anything more about By The Way, or even have any footage, please let us know in the comments below. Nick Studios 10 from February to June 2013, Nickelodeon unsuccessfully launched an experimental live studio skit-based show named Nick Studios 10. Partially, it served as a platform to rerun popular favorites, including SpongeBob SquarePants, Fairly Odd Parents, and others. But interspersed between the reruns of these shows, and sometimes interrupting right in the middle of episodes, was Nick Studios 10. The show was made up of the zany antics of 14 actors. They featured strange and random skits, intentionally controversial challenges, and viral videos. One of the most famous recovered clips features the teens asking Janet McCurdy and Ariana Grande to sip on disgusting savory smoothies made from olives, cheese, and other undesirable ingredients. It was partially filmed on a handheld camera and it had a no-frills, low-budget style, which was popular at the time. But although that style was popular, Nick Studios 10 was really not. Universally panned, pretty much all critics and audiences hated the show, 
and were especially critical of the non-sequitur interruptions of the fan-favorite cartoons. Viewers also complained that the purposely gonzo style was obnoxious and disgusting, and that the hosts themselves were annoying and unfunny. Lots of people took to social media to complain, and criticized the show for many reasons. Controversially, the Nick Studios 10 social media account would bite back, insulting those who criticized the show on Twitter. These tweets were later deleted, an apology was issued, and the account was removed. Even in hindsight, the show is in no way fondly remembered, as a current IMDb rating of 1.1, making it one of the most unpopular Nickelodeon shows of all time, and by a very long way. A small number of clips have survived, but very little, considering each episode ran for two hours. Because the show was so unpopular, there is little demand for finding any new footage, so it's unlikely that any more will resurface in the future. Maybe large parts of Nick Studios 10 are lost forever. And maybe that's a good thing. Nick News Largely sensible Nick News aired on Nickelodeon for a very long time, featuring semi-regularly on the channel from the early 1990s all the way to 2015. But as you might have worked out for yourself, this one's a little different from all the other Nickelodeon shows we've covered. Instead of being an entertainment piece, Nick News was instead a magazine-style series aimed at educating children and teenagers on various topics and timely themes. It tackled child-specific issues like peer pressure, drug dangers, video games, school shootings, alcoholic parents, and the benefits and struggles of education. But it also covered current affairs, including 9-11, the Gulf Wars, AIDS, HIV, same-sex parents, and various other topical themes. While it sometimes ran weekly, other periods only saw sporadic specials. In total, it's thought that there were around 180 episodes, but most sources can't seem to agree on an exact figure. Hosted by Linda Ellerby, an experienced and respected journalist and former NBC anchorwoman, it was a surprisingly serious show and completely contrasted with the vast majority of Nickelodeon's regular output. Ellerby hosted the show for its entirety. It ran for a surprisingly lengthy 25 years making it one of the network's longest-running shows. The final episode of this run aired in December 2015, and was titled, quote, Hello, I Must Be Going. 25 Years of Nick News with Linda Ellerby. Because the show was informative rather than entertaining, and it'll likely remain a piece of partially lost Nickelodeon media forever. Some of the most important and influential episodes were released on VHS and DVD, but large parts of the show have understandably been lost. Interestingly, Nick News was revived in 2020, and is still running now. Each episode of the show's current version clocks in at 60 minutes, with 13 episodes so far. Oh dear. Oh Dear is probably the strangest and most disturbing entry on our list. This little-known oddity was thought to be lost forever, with lots of Reddit users taking to the platform to discuss and dissect their vague memories. All that seemed to remain was a very brief still from an ancient Nicktoons bumper, and many hazy recollections. But after lots of fishing and searching, it was rediscovered in June 2022. Oh Dear is an animated two-minute short film created by artist Ji-Wook Kim, I hope I'm saying that right, in 2004. It was screened as part of the Nicktoons Film Festival in 2005, which was shown at the California Institute of Arts University and on the Nicktoons Network. On the Nicktoons Film Festival DVD, the short film was described as follows, quote, while an old lady watches TV, her cat witnesses the odd goings-on in the living room. But in truth, the film is much more strange than its brief synopsis suggests, looking more like it was crafted by David Firth than for a Nickelodeon film festival. It's largely monochrome and strangely grainy, and features a creepy, crackling soundtrack. 
In the short film, a droopy-faced old woman watches TV. Behind her, someone breaks into her home and steals a lamp. Shortly after, a creepy giant emerges upside down from the ceiling. The woman and her cat then look at one another. The woman says, kitty kitty, the cat meows and purrs, and the scene fades to black. So, yeah. Although the short film was pretty niche and unusual, Jiwoo Kim has gone on to massive success. Receiving animation credits for Futurama, Fairly Our Parents, The Simpsons Movie, and more. Do you know any more Nickelodeon lost media that we didn't discuss in this episode? If you do, or if you have any ideas for future lost media videos, let us know in the comments down below. Until next time, thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.